everyone. I am Jenna and this is Apple Dollar Creations. So I put a, a schedule up of what's going to happen this week in the time of the videos and I will repost that. But what we're making today is a dragonfly. And what we're making it out of is a kitchen whisk. So you might already have one of these and you don't have to go purchase one. Um, they come in different sizes. This is a larger one. But one thing you have to make sure when you are purchasing your whisk or using one you have is that it has five of these wires. So you have, you have to have five. Um, I went to buy another one. This is Dollar Tree. My Dollar Tree didn't have them. I went to Walmart, and the one they had was only four wires. Four wires is not going to work. You need They must have five. Also, this little disc here, if you can cut it out, fine. I tried on this one, and it's a much heavier um, metal than ones I have worked with in the past. And I couldn't cut it out. Um, I used several different wire cutters that I have, and it wouldn't come. So if you can't get yours out or you just don't want to mess with it, just push it down as far as it will go to the bottom. So another thing is when we're working with this, after we start bending uh, these wires, you want to make sure that th this all lines up to this ring on the bottom. You want this to stay flat. So I have some pony beads that I picked up at Dollar Tree. You can get beads anywhere. Walmart, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, um, anywhere that sells jewelry making supplies. You also can use broken jewelry if you have broken jewelry. Now I picked up some... Um, I think a flea market is in a jar. You can use that. Um, you also want, I'm using a Gorilla Glue. This is the tube. Now, I'm not sure if I've ever showed you this, but when I open any of the tubes of stuff that I use, I put a cup hook in the top of it. And what that does is keeps this spout open. So I just screw it in and unscrew it when I want. Now, every once in a while, if you don't clean this tip off before you put the cup hook in it, you will have to pick off some of that glue that's dried around the top of the spout. But this is what I do all the time. And I turn it until it won't turn anymore. So there's a tip for you to keep these spouts open because sometimes these things, um, they harden in there. And then you, what do you do? poke a hole in a tube. I have um, some paddle wire. Now you can get this silver because this is silver, but you want as much color um, on this as possible. So, whoops, I'm using the green. You can use silver. It does come in colors, but um, this is all I have of the silver. But I'm using the green because the more, more colorful these are, the prettier. Like I said, I have some broken jewelry. Now, you need something for eyes. Um, dragonflies have big eyes. Now, I went looking through some of the stuff I have. Now, these are coat buttons. See, they're half circles. Now, this would work, but I found these buttons. And they're variegated color. I think these will look better. This is what I'm going to use. So if you have a button box, dig through it. Um, if you don't, you can buy real colorful beads and use those. Also, I thought about this part below this wire disc in here. I want to cover that up. So I have several options here that I will show you as we go. I have the hot glue gun on. We're not going to use much hot glue. I'm using gr the Gorilla Glue, uh, but this is what we're mainly going to be using. But mostly, 
all of this is held together with wire. Now, when I was thinking about this, I swore my uh, chain was um, silver. So this morning I went to get it. It's not, it's gold. This is the chain I'm using. You can use any kind of chain. You just need a little bit to make a hanger. I thought about taking it outside and spray painting it, but it's raining out, so we're just going to go with the gold. You can also hang these from a window. You can get a suction cup that has a hook on it and hang them in a window. So this is how we're going to get started. There is one main wire that goes up over the top. So that's the one we're going to start with, and we're going to take it, we're bending these. They are easy to bend. The cheaper your whisk is, the easier these are going to be to bend. So I'm just going to pull it to the side, and it just takes a little bit of muscle to do this, but you can do it. Now when you do this, this is going to want to stay up. You want to twist it, because these are your wings. So you want to twist it so this is laying flat. You want it to be flat. So then we're going to take the next one and we're going to bend it to the other side. So you just get down here as far as you can in the bottom and then you just twist these to the side. And you just fuss with them and bend them. Now you don't want to like forcefully bend these because they could snap off but um, they are pretty easy to work with now if you have to take a pair of pliers and give yourself a little bit of help so there you go so then we'll take the next one I want this one to be the bottom wing so the next one is going to be a top wing. So let's bend this one down a little bit. And the whole time I'm keeping an eye on that ring, making sure that it's flat. So I'm going to pull this down some more so this one can come up here. And I'm just going to twist it so that these are flat. See, they're flat. So then the next one that's on top is the other wing for this side. So that one wants to go down, so we're going to bend that one up. So there you go. So then we're left with this center one here. And I'm taking a pair of wire snips and cutting it right in half. So we've cut it. So then I'm going to turn these to the side. I think I'm going to use pliers for this. And we'll bend it in so that these are just about side by side. I'm just going to straighten this out a little bit. You just keep working with your wings until you are happy with them. So they look like wings. Now at this point, you can make this into a butterfly. And how you do that is just open up these wings more. But Dragonfly has a narrower wing. But if you open these up, you can make it into a butterfly. Okay, now where all these wires are twisted, that's your back. And where your antennas come up from the center, that is your front. So at this point, we're going to put our eyes on. And since I am using buttons, I'm going to have to wire these on. Because these have the two holes in the center. So that's what I'm going to wire these on. And I need my glasses.
So I was thinking that I could put a bead right in the middle of where those um, the holes are, the thread holes, and I'm thinking the gold or the blue. Gold, yellow, whatever color they are. So I'm just gonna grab my paddle wire and take off a piece. And I will take it up through a hole in the button. Now this is a two hole button. And I'm gonna take one of the beads and put it there, but I don't want where the hole is in the button or the bead, I want the bead to stay on its side. So I'm gonna just twist this a little bit. When I take this wire down through the second hole on the button, I'm gonna make sure that my bead is on its side. I'll show you here in a second. Can you see the bead? There's the hole. I want the bead on its side. Now I'm just gonna push some of this wire through because I want a good bit of wire, at least a few inches on the back side of this button. Making sure that bead stays on its side. You just have to mess with this. By twisting this wire, you can get it to stay like that. And I'm just gonna twist this together in the back. That will hold it. But I still want a tail. And then I'm going to do the other one. And I'm doing the very same thing. But this one, your eyes are going to be close. These also look like frog eyes. So this is how close you want your eyes to be. Just like a quarter of an inch between the two. Now you can buy gigantic beads and use that, but when I saw these buttons, I thought, first thing I thought was eyes. And I don't know where I got these buttons from because like broken jewelry, I buy buttons every time I see them. Because I have thousands of buttons. So here is our eyes. See how the beads stick up? So where these two prongs are, that's that's what I'm using as the front. And I'm going to take these and I am going to wire them. That's why you need tails on your wire. Right down here. It's hard to do standing it up. <laughs> Let me grab my wire. There we go. That's how far down you want your eyes, right above where this metal disc is right there. Let me get these straight. And I'm gonna take the tails of the wire and I'm gonna wrap it around each one of these prongs that we've cut, just to make it secure so it doesn't move. And then I'm gonna twist both of these wires together. So however you have to wire this on depends on how you bent your wings. So I'm going to take this up over this prong.
I'm going to pull these tails really tight. And twist this, the two tails together. So you need a couple of inches on this wire. I like can a couple inches on this wire so that you can twist this tightly. Get a phone call right in the middle. I'm using my phone today. So we're making a dragonfly, Kim, out of a kitchen whisk. And I'm just going to twist this wire really tight. So at this point, you can go back and you can adjust your eyes so that they're side by side. And I'm going to use a pair of pliers to get this even tighter. So there you go. There's the eyes. Oop, they're a little cross-eyed. Let's fix those. And if you have to, you can even put a little bit of glue behind the bead on the button. And I'm going to snip off this excess wire. And just twist this a little bit more. And then you could tuck that tail from the wire back behind the eyes. There we go, they're tighter. Okay, so now these are our, our antennas. So we're gonna take some of these pony beads and put them on. You can do different colors. You can do them all the same. I'm doing different colors. I'm just picking them out and putting them on and now your antennas, it, how long do you want them? You can have really long ones or you could cut this down and make shorter. So I'm just going to, I think I'm going to make long ones. You at least want them a good bit above the eye. So that's uh, one way you can gauge this. Now these pony beads, you pick these up at a Dollar Tree, you get a good bit of pony beads in one pack. Because all of these are just, it's one pack of pony beads. I forget what the package said. Now, I am not, there's no rhyme or reason to these. I'm just putting the beads on. They're different on, on both of the antennas. So, it, you don't have to have a blue and a blue and a pink and a pink and, you know, go up like that. It's whatever you want. So here's our eyes, that's a good bit above. So I'm going to cut a little bit of this wire off. I'm going to hold this bead so I don't want the beads going flying. Let me try this pair. My hands are not working today. Oh, that one's not working. I think I need to have these sharpened. So you want at least a thumb above, whoops, above your beads because we're going to bend these over. And we're just going to twist them. See how easy they are to twist? I lost a bead. Let me put another one back. So when you do this, you twist this around.
and that holds your beads on your antenna. And then I'm just going to take the pliers on both sides and flatten this out. So see how this is twisted and there's a little bit of the wire on this side of the antenna. That way your beads cannot come off. Now you can totally fill that up if you want. If you have jewelry making tools, that might even be easier. I don't, because I don't do jewelry. I don't do that much with beads. Just squeeze that together and then flatten it out. So we have our eyes and we have our antennas done. Now we want to make these wings colorful too. Let me put these tools aside because we don't need those. So I'm taking the paddle wire and I'm going to take probably a good maybe 20 inches of this off at one time. I have glue on these. I need to clean these blades off. Now I'm using the green, like I said, because I want as much color as I can get on these beads. So from the back side, I'm just going to take it through one of these loops and I'm going to twist it. Just twist it around one of those, these wire uh, parts. And I'm just going to twist it to close it off. if I can get a hold of it. Okay, and I'm just going to twist this. Now I'm going to twist it a good bit just so it holds. You don't want to put your beads on this and then them go flying all over the floor. So it's face down and I'm just going to start putting beads on. And I'm going to do like maybe three or four beads at a time. And we're going to start weaving this. And again, I'm just picking out a bead. I'm not paying attention to what I have here. So I have four beads there. Let me do one more. Now this would be good for like a Girl Scout craft or Bible school. So we're taking our wire and I have the beads on right here and I'm going to twist it around the nearest prong totally through. And I'm going to put some more beads on. So if you buy everything, or everything at Dollar Tree, this would be a, a really cheap kids craft. Now I'm coming up, the first beads went behind the dragonfly, because here's our eyes, this is the front. These ones are coming up the front, so I'm going over top of that wing. And again, so I'm only going to take three there. Wrap the wire around once. That secures it. And the wire is again in the back. So we're going to put more beads on. And we're just going to keep doing that and weaving it back and forth across this. Now, it depends on you how many beads and how tight you want these beads to be together. I don't want them really tight. I'm just weeding it. So there's space in between the wire. So I've wrapped this around. Now the wire's out the front.
So except for bending the um, different prongs for the wings, even small children could do this. So as you weave the wire around, you're gonna find out. We started out with four beads, now I have five beads. So I'm just going to wrap the wire around. Now the wire's out the back. And you just keep alternating it until you have as many beads as you want on this. So when you get to the center of your wing, you're going to have to add more beads. One more. And you do that to all four of the wings. See, I'm leaving space in between my wires. But you definitely can do that. If you want it really tight and your whole wing covered with beads, you could do that. I'm leaving it with a space. So now, the, now we're back in the front. So you have one, once your wire is going out the back, the next wire, you're, you're putting the beads on the front. Now when you get around the circle on your wing, you're going to have to wrap this wire around a couple of times and do it, pull it really tight to get it to hold. So now we're on the back of the wing again. That's one reason why I started with such a long piece of wire. And we're going to tie this, I think we're going to tie this one off because I want to go on and show you. What we're using the chain, how we're putting that on, and what we're using this broken jewelry for. One more bead. So since I am finishing this one off, I'm going to wrap this around about four times and then I'm going to take the end of my wire back through the very last bead. And that's going to secure it to keep it from flipping off. And then on the other side of that last bead, I'm going to wrap this wire a couple times again. And then I'm going to take the wire and wrap it around all those wires on that very last bead. Just wrap it around. And that will secure this. And I'm going to cut this off. And just wrap that tail right around. So there you go. We have a wing done. Now I'm not gonna make you watch me do all four of these wings. We're gonna move on and we're gonna finish this. Now to me, right here needs something. So I, this is a big coat button I thought we could put there. This is a, a broken earring. So I thought that looked bug-like to cover that up there. I'm thinking I'm gonna use this. Now I'm going to use a combination 
of E6000 and hot glue. And I'm just going to put it right on the whisk. And we'll put a little bit of hot glue in the center to hold this. Turn this over and see where more glue needs to be. So this will take a while for that E6000 to dry, but we're getting that instant hold here in a moment with the hot glue. I like that one there. So we're going to turn this over and let that catch. And we're going to make our hanger. So I'm just going to take this chain. You can use any chain. At Hobby Lobby, you can get real chunky necklace chain. You can use that. And if you watch, you can even get it on clearance. So there you go. So I'm turning this over on its face and I'm going to take my hand and press this right where all the wings are just to make sure that this is all flat. So I'm going to take this chain. Now this has links that will open. If yours does not, then you can wire it, but this has links that will open. So where the wings crisscross is where I'm going to put my chain. Pinch this. So you just measure how long do you want your wire. I'm hanging mine outside on one of my uh, hooks. But if you're hanging this in uh, a window, you may not want such a long hanger. So after you get all of your beading on your wings, you can also put this chain in between some of the wire on the beat on the wing. So there you go. Now when I get this wing done, I'm going to do just what I did here. I put the wire or the chain in between some of those wires, but I wanted you to get the gist of it. So now the reason I said to leave this flat, we're going to make, let me get my glue, it's seeping out here. Close that up we're going to put some jewelry on the bottom of it. Right from this circle hook. So I have, this It was an earring. This I think was part of an earring. I also have this one earring. So we're gonna mess with these and figure out how we're going to put all of this together. And we're going to hang it off that bottom loop. And I have 
a, a jump ring here that we can hook all this together. But this has one of these hooks that goes through your ear. So I'm thinking I'm just going to bend this. Put it on the, um, through that, and then I'm just going to close it. Just bend that hook right up around. Maybe I want the, the um, that crazy heart there first. Let's see. Let's get a jump ring, put it through this heart, because this is heavier. I can imagine someone wearing that on their ear. But it, we all wore crazy big earrings when we were young, especially if you're my generation. Of course, I see some crazy big earrings now, and I wonder how the girls wear them. So we'll put that jump ring through there, and then I'm going to use my pliers and close that jump ring off. I see some of the customers coming in to work, and I'm like, oh, doesn't that hurt your ear? But I wore those crazy big earrings, too, when I was in the 70s, we wore those. So everything old is new again. Okay, I gotta get my jump ring straightened out here. It would be better if I had a pair of needle nose pliers. I tried to find a pair in my husband's stash of tools and I couldn't find a pair. So I'm just using regular pliers, which is a little bit more difficult when you're working with something so tiny. You can just wire this on too. You don't have to go buy jump rings. I just took this off a piece of this jewelry here. So there we go. We have that hanging. Now, since this earring does not have a hole in the bottom of it, I'm going to take this hook for the earring and straighten it out and put some E6000 on it. Because I have a bunch of it that's just dripped out here on my so I just and some hot glue on the back of this. And push that in. That jump ring's not going to work. I'm going to wire it. Now, since I'm using wire, I can take a bead and put on the front of that, too. Just a couple of beads. So there we go. So we have the jewelry hanging down. Now you can also put beads down along the stem here, the handle, if you want. So I am going to continue working on these beads. I will post a final picture of it. Um, if it stops raining today, I'll do it outside. 
But I hope you like this. It's just something, this would be very pretty hanging in a kitchen window with the sun coming through. You'll get all the colors coming through these beads. But I hope you like this. Let me know if you try it. If you do, post a picture. And it's just Dollar Tree Whisk, Dollar Tree Pony beads, and some broken jewelry. And a little bit of wire. Now this paddle of wire I've been using for quite some time. So there's a lot on there. And like a couple buttons. You can take buttons off of something. When I'm throwing an article of clothing away, I, de I always pull the buttons off. But I like those buttons for those eyes. And a little piece of chain. So, $3 we have in that. So that's why I say it would be very good craft for kids. If you if you need a kid craft for, for an organization that you belong to or that you're in charge of. Because there's 300 pony beads in a pack for $1.25. And the smaller whisk at uh, Walmart are 88 cents, so they're even cheaper than the Dollar Tree. But this is a Dollar Tree one. So, there you go. I'm going to let my glues dry, dry while I'm working on the rest of the wings. And join me on Wednesday, 3 o'clock, and I will repost the schedule so that you can see what we're making. And thanks a lot for joining me. Have a great day.